times have changed. The enforcers, once down and out, now unstoppable. John Avery fuels Chicago's attack, leading by example, streaking toward the rushing title, and possibly the MVP. After a horrific start, Tillman and company found the winning formula, riding a wave of emotion, challenging anyone who gets in their way. Two teams with postseason dreams. Two teams that control their own destiny. Two teams ready to leave it all on the field. Well, we're in a New York state of mind. The Chicago Enforcers and the New York Hitmen. In the XFL's Eastern Division, Orlando has clinched a playoff spot. Chicago and New York in action tonight fight for the remaining berth in the East. For the Chicago Enforcers, not just a lot on the line, but everything on the line tonight. A loss in the Enforcers are done this season. Out of the playoff picture. They need a win to stay alive. Remember, guys, it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. 60 minutes of football all the way. Two halves. You take it one play at a time. That's how you handle it. The New York hit men also three and five, but winners versus Chicago earlier this season. If New York can do it to the enforcers again tonight, and if heavy favorite Orlando beats Birmingham this evening, the hit men go to the playoffs. Here for one purpose, win. That's it. Winning. This is our game. This is our show. This is our. Everybody in this room. That's it. Matt Vaskirchen from the Meadowlands. Two playoff spots claimed in the XFL as Orlando and LA have clinched. Two playoff spots left, one of them in the East. These two teams tonight vying for one remaining spot, a chance at the playoffs, and a chance at the $1 million game at the end of the season. Let's talk about the New York Hitmen, the home team, and welcome in Jesse Ventura. Jesse, this is a different New York team than the one that began the season. Absolutely. New York was probably the worst team in the XFL, starting off 0-3, Matt. Now they're probably the most improved team in the XFL, but Coach Rusty Tillman says that doesn't mean anything. If they don't make the playoffs it is meaningless now what has caused the change Wally Richardson at quarterback he's brought passing versatile running attack and team leadership but there's a problem with Wally Richardson tonight Wally Richardson with a leg injury he's not out there tonight instead they send a guy out there who's not made an XFL start and we welcome in our own Iron Man Mike Adamley Mike Court McGuffey big game on the line he's making his first start of the year yeah virtually no pro experience just a rookie Matt he's only thrown 16 passes passes this season. Unfortunately, they came two months ago in a loss to the Las Vegas Outlaws. His strong suits, smarts, leadership, a decent command of the medium-range medium, medium range passing game, but there's a quantum difference between playing in a game where the outcome has already been decided and a game where there's a playoff spot hanging in the balance. What's going through Court McGuffey's mind? One man knows, our own Fred Rogan. Freddie? Court, making your first start, a lot has to be running through your mind tonight, but what concerns do you have as you approach this game? Um, I'm, I'm just excited to get out there and, uh, and play. This is a great, great atmosphere here, Giant Stadium, and uh, just looking forward to getting out there, playoffs on the line, just go out there and have fun. All right, Jesse, that's the thumbnail sketch with New York. What about Chicago? It's a pretty easy mathematical situation. They win tonight, they're still alive, they lose, they're done. That's right, and you know, Chicago has their destiny, as you said, Matt, in their own hands. 
and they need to come in here tonight. They need to win, and that centers around running back John Avery. John Avery accounts for almost 50% of the Chicago offense, but there's a problem there, too, with John Avery. A lot of problems tonight, I'm sensing. There and that, that problem, Mike Adamley, is that uh, John Avery's a little dinged up. The one thing they can't control, Chicago, is the condition of John Avery's hamstring. Some controversy surrounding the XFL's leading rusher last week in the final seconds of a 13-0 win over Birmingham. Inexplicably, Avery put back in the ball game, and this is what happened. He pulled his hamstring, perhaps jeopardizing his ability to play tonight. He's going to be all right. He'll be playing. But looking back, hell yes, I wouldn't have had him on the field. We talked to John Avery last night. His said his condition was anywhere from 65 to 70 percent. How is he tonight? Well, right now he's with Chris Raggy. Chris? 24 hours ago, John, you were 65 percent. How do you feel right now, and how effective can the XFL's leading rusher be this evening? I don't know. It just depends, you know. Um, if my hamstring holds up, I'll be like Al Pacino in New York. I care for fun. Believe that. <laughs> Moments ago, the scramble for the ball, the scramble for possession. Tony McCall of Chicago and the home guy, Donnie Caldwell. It's squirted free. It's a sloppy track out there. This field is sustained rain, and Donnie Caldwell not only won the scramble, but tried to advance it into the end zone. Can't do that, Donnie. Ready to kick it off. And Andy Crosland of the Chicago Enforcers is set to kick Kirby Dardar and Butler Benote back to receive for the home hitmen. There is a lot on the line tonight. As we mentioned, something to keep in the back of your minds as well. There is a sloppy track at the Meadowlands. The field took a lot of rain over the past couple of days. The field had not been covered. That may or may not be a factor. And week nine of the XFL is underway. Kirby Dardar, the Syracuse product, up ahead of the 25, cuts outside and finds some running room. A big return off the opening kickoff as Kirby Dardar returns it 31 yards. Well, here he is, fellas. We're told that uh, rookie quarterback Court McGuffey is from the cerebral school of quarterbacking. Great collegiate credentials, but how's that okay, going to transfer go. tonight? Pro, pro, pro. We got shuffle, the dice left, 38 toss, D reverse, triple pass, all one on one. Ready? This play has got everything in it. You heard the reverse in there. Perhaps they may do that a lot tonight. A lot of trick plays up Rusty Tillman's sleeve tonight. Eddie, Only a three-man front for Chicago. And already miscommunication. McGuffey was looking one way, he turned the other way, and there's Corey Ivey to drop him for a loss of nine. The reverse was on. Unfortunately, I don't think the wide right receiver, Posse, Posse. who was supposed to be the reverse man, heard the call. I know, I know. Broken play. Posse. Oh, Yeah, and Aaron Humphrey says, welcome to the XFL, my brother. Mike, what's it like when you're a wide receiver and you got to take on one of those linebackers coming through like that? Jesse, you pray. You pray. Already in a second and long are the home hitmen. Look out. Here come the linebackers again. McGuffey gets it away, and they've got a completion near the original line of scrimmage. Kirby Dardar on the receiving end. Wally Richardson out tonight. He strained the posterior cruciate ligament in his knee. But they expect him possibly to be back next week. And let's hope that if you're a New York Hitman fan that there'll be a reason to play next week. Should there be a playoff spot, he will be in the game. No question about it. Scatlin. Well, it was Richardson who really led the turnaround. But at this point, the Hitman hopes rest with young court McGuffey. He's got Joe Aska out of the backfield, but he finds Dino Filia. Three straight passing plays out of the gate for McGuffey. Rusty Tillman showing a lot of confidence in his young passer. Well, you're going to have to pass that second and third play when you get sacked on the first play. You can't run the ball then. Three passing plays, but it's a three and out as Leo Aragoos is on to punt for the hitman. So the Chicago defense does their job. They're getting the ball back. Now we'll see the status of Avery. It's a live ball at the 30-yard line. Aragus has the third best per punt average in the XFL this season. Gets away a big one. Corey Ivey back to the goal line. Trying to get out of danger, and he's dropped at the six.
Israel Rabin, one of the big defensive linemen that lead the Hitmen charge, how do they prepare? Our game plan is the same as every team game plan that plays against Chicago. Stop Avery. We've been pressing all week. It's the end of the game. What? I like to hit him. I like for him to try and run over me. I don't like the guy. Put Avery in the game. This guy's talking and calling my name. I've lined up against Bruce Smith. I've blocked LeVon Kirkland. They mean to tell me this guy is thinking I'm going to have nightmares because he's calling my name. Please. <laughs> well, here we go, baby. <laughs> Kevin McDougal trying to get rid of him in his own end zone and a safety in their first play from scrimmage. And guess who? Bernard Russ and the man you just heard from, Israel Raybon. Well, the last time these two teams met, New York sacked the Chicago quarterback nine times, and they're doing it again tonight on the first play. Number 14, the Zombies are safety. One of the things the New York, New Jersey hitmen do so well, stunts up front. Watch number 55, Bernard Russ, number 95, Dwayne Saab. Just like that. McDougal on his back. Well, running the option in Notre Dame only gives you so many looks at big defenders like that, and right out of the gate, the hitmen have a 2-0 lead. Matt, next to Las Vegas, New York perhaps the best defense in the XFL. Everyone over the top to the left. Let's go. Let's go. Hello, hello. Hey. So we're going to go special middle again. Special middle again. Hey, are you in this or not? He can't go. Let's go special middle. Move up 20 yards. Well, the defense featured for New York early tonight, as Mike Adamley just got through telling you, it's the second-ranked defense in the XFL behind Vegas. Tops versus the pass, and it was that pass rush that took care of McDougal in his first play from scrimmage. And so far, Matt, we got a Derek Jeter home run with a man on. Two to nothing, New York over Chicago. Uh, that's right, opening day here at the Meadowlands. <laughs> Well, they're three and one in March are the enforcers after that miserable 0 and 4 start and it's worth mentioning again okay. fellas that the fourth of the 0 and 4 came at the expense of these hitmen and let's remember something Rusty Tillman's been lucky both times John Avery did not play in Chicago and he's limited here tonight. Kirby Dardar picks up after a bounce and returns a couple of yards up ahead to the 39. That's where Court McGuffey and the Hitmen offense will take over for the second time tonight. Great field position. There was a quarterback hey, controversy. Face, get over the side, Butler. Did he make a call here? Man, man, man. 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 We're all covered up. Yeah, yeah. We're just saying. All right, just this is our Stay on our level, so we can pick that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tight end slash tackle, Tim Martin. Set! Getting chewed out a bit on the sidelines. He's got to miss that block. Blue 24! Oh, <laughs> banging up the middle is Joe Aska. A gain of five. Bernard, on the safety, were you running a stunt? Is that how you got in so quickly? I just trying to find the ball. Trying to find the ball. <laughs> You're not going to give it up, are you? Nah. <laughs> nah. I'll find the ball. Hey, Freddie, this is week nine. These guys aren't going to give it up. He must work for the CIA in the offseason. You know, a <laughs> wink and a sound bite get you a long way in the world, not necessarily in this league. Set. Second and Red five Eddie. for McGuffey. Yeah. Red Play action. He's got Aska again. Nothing. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of two. Pro, huddle up, huddle up. Slot right, check, lead or slant, if they're in a, in a stretched out odd, run the slant. Okay, here we go, Tim, slot right, check, lead or slant on 101, ready? One of those check with me plays, they'll see that the read is at the line of scrimmage, and based on the call that he makes here, they'll run Set. either the lead or slant. Black 90! Black 90! On third and three. He's got a receiver, a completion, and a first down. Easy up, easy up, easy up, easy up. Easy up, easy up. 
Well, McGuffey got the start in a decision over the week between he and Charlie Polari. Good job. Good job. I use my head, I think, is, is the biggest thing. I like to read the coverage, um, I know where my guys are going, uh, you know, look at what the defense has given, given me, and, and just take, take what's there. You know, don't try to force anything. That's the game Blue plan. 41. We mentioned there was a controversy during this, uh, this week leading up to the game, and it wasn't really determined who was going to start, McGuffey or Polari. This is Joe Ascott. First down for the Hitmen, a gain of 18. Well, one thing about Joe Aska, he's not going to fake you out. He's going to run you over. And this is an ominous sign if you're a Chicago Enforcer fan. This guy is 5'11", 247 pounds, and one of the best north-south runners in the league. If you're a defensive back, you just cringe when you see him coming. Now, Mike, why is it always north-south straight up the field and east-west is across the field? It's the way football fields are laid out, and I don't know whoever came up with that one. All right. Something about the magnetic poles. Adam Lee's 0 for 1 tonight. As time winds down on the play clock, McGuffey going long over the middle. Had a receiver, and it's in and out of the hands of Bob Rosensteel. What's worse, Jesse keeps track. <laughs> He was running north-south on that. Okay. <laughs> Brings up a second and ten now for the hitmen. Think about running the fake. The hitmen emptied out all the trick plays a couple of weeks ago. That's the week they turned it around in the league with an upset win over San Francisco. Dino Filio, the ball carrier, dropped for a loss. Very nice. Jason, nice. Jason Shura. Yeah. The yeah, former, the erstwhile Croatian sensation when he played for the University of Washington and led the Pac-10 in sacks for two years running, I believe. Wide shallow on one-on-one. -on -one. Ready? Be ready, Bob. Find the hole. He's going to bring up a third and a long now. Last week in their loss, the Hitmen were 0 for 11 on third and fourth downs. They've converted one tonight already. Plenty of time for McGuffey. He dumps it off. Intercepted. Thrown, tipped and picked off by Jason Gray. A flag on the play, however. And this is one of the things that the Chicago Enforcers defense does so well. Holding New York. They rank dead Lance in pass defense, but for some reason, right, right. they lead the league in interceptions. That was number 13. This one courtesy of a pick. And perhaps a ball, Jesse, that McGuffey should not have thrown. Definitely a ball that shouldn't have thrown. Every time you're picked off, Mike, you shouldn't have thrown. It looked like one of those Mark Wilson mid-80s Raiders passes. Yikes. New York on top early in the first quarter on a safety play against the Chicago offense in their first play from scrimmage and courtesy of Bud Light will check in with Orlando and Birmingham. Playoff implications abound in week nine of the XFL, and as you can tell, they are just underway in that one. Court, you said you've been waiting for this day your entire life. What's the difference in the speed of the game you see from the practice field now to game action tonight? Um, it's, it's the same. Uh, that last throw, I just needed to run the football, tried to make a little too much happen, but we're moving the football, we just need to keep that up. Kevin McDougal starting his second series. The first one didn't end so hot, and his pass is incomplete intended for Willie really Tate. And trust me, Jesse, it's not the same. It's like driving on a Sunday morning on a country road, and then all of a sudden you have to drive in midtown Manhattan in rush hour. Well, he's trying to stay calm and collected and look like he's not uh, overly fired up, I think, on the sidelines. His heart's pumping, though. Kevin McDougal was in a, a similar situation that McGuffey was in coming into week five of the XFL season. Chicago struggled under Tim Lester. They made the move to McDougal, and Chicago's gone to three and one. This is John Avery. Looks good and healthy, at least uh, until he was tackled by Damon Wheeler. 
A gain of five on the play. Matt, these will be interesting moments for John Avery. He told us last night that he wasn't worried about his initial burst. That was there. What he's worried about is that extra gear that he usually has, his ability to run away from people. Hard to tell right there with a great tackle by Damon Wheeler whether or not John is close to anywhere close to 100%. Well, if he's in fact not able to continue tonight, Jesse, that means that New York will have caught a break not once but twice. That's right. We can't do it. About, is it seven? No, it looks more like five. That's a little bit different. Hey, look, y'all look for the screen draw. Yeah, yeah. John Avery was not available, did not play earlier this season against New York. And to show how valuable Matt and Mike that John is, he's the only player to win Player of the Week honor twice in the XFL. 180 yards last week versus Birmingham. Only player in the league to be averaging over 100 yards per game this season. But Ron Meyer says Kevin McDougal, not John Avery, is the reason why they're in a position tonight to make the playoffs. Let's go. So, you know, Kevin McDougal, yeah, he's three and one when he sleeps next to the window. His roommate is Aaron Bailey. Last night, Aaron was telling us that inadvertently he made the mistake of putting a suitcase on the bed next to the window. McDougal said, ah, 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 ah. Blue 44! Don't change the name when you win. Superstition abounds yeah. in professional sports. Third and five play now for McDougal. He's going to hang him high, and he's got a man wide open. Who burned it for you? Out of bounds. Bailey. He was out of bounds, however. Well, Bailey made a nice move to lose coverage. McDougal found him, but it all happened wide of the foul line. Chicago will have to punt. In his previous four starts for the most time, Kevin McDougal has played pretty close to the vest, but they think they can air it out tonight. New York's two corners, Joey Elams and Damon Wheeler, play a lot of bump out there, tight coverage. They want to see if they can go deep on these guys, especially with a speed merchant like Kirby Dardar. He's back in punt return mode right now. Oh, we got a flag. Delay a game, I bet. Yep. Time clock ran out. Just the second penalty of the night so far. This is a far cry from the flag-laden affair we watched last week in L.A. You know, Mike and Matt, you probably don't realize this, but when I played football, I never We're played and we lost a game side, in my entire career. Just ran out of time a few times. <laughs> Oh, that was back in the day of the leather helmet, was it not? Because uh, I seen the and no face masks. Alert <laughs> It's back when you were getting seasoned. Let's go! <laughs> it's a live ball at the 42-yard line now. Is Andy Crossland? Oh, great field, field position here. Kirby Gardner who makes a move at midfield. He's got the corner as well, and it's tripped up at the 32-yard line. 22-yard return for Kirby Dardar. This is a guy that used to be a running back in the Big East. He's used to taking big hits, and he likes the contact. I mean, this game is all about respect. If you're out there getting hit and you letting them hit you time and time again, they're going to keep on doing it. When you put your foot down and let them know, hey, everything you bring in, I'm bringing right back, and if I could have a chance to knock you out, I'm going to take it. Blue Never 34. let them see you sweat. McGuffey and the Hitmen starting in their best field position of the night. A handoff to Dino Filia looking for something up the middle, maybe a couple yards. Now, Dino Filia, a guy for New York, New Jersey, who has had some problems, foot problems this year. He might be their quickest back, their version of John Avery. If he's in the lineup tonight, along with uh, Joe Aska, could spell trouble for Chicago, Jess. Well, the other thing, too, Mike, right now, New York has had three possessions with great field position. They've only got two points. That's going to shift at some point in the game, and Rusty Tillman better get some points on the board while he's got the advantage. Rusty felt very good about his decision to start Court McGuffey, a highly decorated collegiate player in Division II. Winner of the Harlan Hill Award in 1999. That pass is complete. Mike Archie out of the backfield and a first down for the hitman at the 15-yard line. Mike Archie out of Penn State leads this team in scoring, and what he does best isn't run the football. 
It's his ability as a pass receiver that makes him dangerous and so valuable to this team. And we talked about the New York resurgence at the top of this telecast. Mike Archie's performance is one of the reasons why. Set! Blue 24! Blue 24! Hunt. Archie rotates out in favor of Joe Eska, and you shall receive! Touchdown, Hitman! A 15-yard run with a lot of love right up the middle. And let's give credit to that New York line, because they opened up a hole right there. I don't think Eska hardly got touched all the way to the end zone. Center, Juan Porter, guards Robert Hunt and Ben Cavill. How'd you like that north and south, Jess? <laughs> that was south. That was towards Florida. On one, on one. Ready? And what a great feeling for the guy, uh, Joe Aska, who is now a go-to guy for Rusty Ready? Tillman. This is a guy that was released yeah. out of camp. Set. Blue 19. New York is at 42% in their PAT completions. And they've taken a timeout to chat about things. Their first of the half. Get the play calling. Well, a lot of room up the middle, as you mentioned, Jesse, Mike, with uh, a lot of people able to fill this hole. What? Great blocks. And if Joe Aska's initial burst makes this happen, a slower running back might not get to that hole as fast. Not Aska. He had his prime at one time was a Division II track All-American. I, I allegedly had a legit 10.100 meter. The other interesting thing, too, is Chicago, again, using that three-man front. So they're going with four linebackers, and that's going to open up that running game more because you ain't got the big beef up front. Let's check in and see what's happening right. elsewhere. A big yeah. game between Orlando and Birmingham. They brought to you by Bud Light, Birmingham quarterback Graham Lee. A nine-yard touchdown pass to Quincy Jackson. Hey, a flanker screen on the nine-yard line. He brings it in. Hey, that's a touchdown. That keeps Birmingham's playoff hopes alive. Our thanks to Jim Ross and Dick Butkus on the call. Birmingham still breathing. The PAT attempt is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Don Sassa from Washington State, the first to get there. All New York early in the Meadowlands. A hit bit on top eight zip. 14 left in the first is safety and a 15-yard run by Joe Aska. And Leo Aragus readies to kick it away for New York. Corey Ivey and Luke Leverson back to receive for Chicago. This one has started out in completely different fashion than last week's Hitmen loss when they fell behind quickly after giving up a TD on the opening kickoff, a 95-yard run back by Brian Shea. Tonight, Rusty Tillman, as if to say, we're going to take charge from the opening whistle. They're on top eight zip. This is Corey Ivey at the 12. And tackled at the 26. Joe, on the touchdown, you took the ball, and it looked like the C parted. You ran right down the middle. Was it you, or was it your lineman? Offensive line, baby. They're doing a good job tonight. We're starting off hard. You know, I'm just trying to make big plays. You're going to show them some love? Nope. They ain't no love in football. It's all about challenge. And then we, the offensive line have stepped up to the challenge, and we're going to keep on make big plays. Chicago starts this drive at their own 26-yard line. They've had lousy field position to start tonight. McDougal hands off on the ground. John Avery good for five yards. So far, running straight ahead shouldn't hurt him too badly. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Nobody more important to Ron Meyer's offensive attack than John Avery, the league's leading rusher. And as Mike and Jesse told you earlier tonight, he's responsible for nearly Move half the total 55. offense that Move the enforcers 55. have mustered this year. Set, hunt, hunt. Avery again, they're trying to establish him again at maybe a yard. Bernard Russ came in to make the tackle. Oh, 
John Avery has been a bit frustrated this year as uh, as he told us yesterday he doesn't feel like the league and its players have gotten the respect that it deserves he flicks around with the remote control just like the rest of us and sees a lot of synchronized swimming and polo and lacrosse and wonders where's the love for the XFL he rebels at the notion that these guys his teammates and the opponents are rejects he is anything but that's for sure McDougal's playing his players and that one's incomplete, intended for junior Lord Ty Talton had good coverage for the hitmen. Well, you know, to continue with John Avery, he told the enforcers at the beginning of the season, and I found this interesting, Jesse, he said, I don't even want to be paid. Just get me some billboards. Well, to date, there are four John Avery billboards, and you know, Mike, in the Chicagoland area. Yeah, and there are, and I did talk to John about that, and I said, don't ever make that statement again. You, you do want, you want to be paid. He's one away from the guy who had the most billboards in history, Mike Adamley, in the Chicago area. Those, those were the, the, the billboards at the post office. <laughs> Derby Dardar received the punt at the 26 and brought down immediately. Two yards on the return, John Fisher was there to make the stop. Really? A flag on the play. Ahead. Kicking team had an illegal man downfield, number 55. Five yards will be added to the run. First down, timeout. With a timeout, the U.S. Army presents victories in life. Tonight, we look at New York linebacker Ron Merkerson, whose football career was in serious jeopardy when he had surgery on both his legs, but he's come back to lead the hitmen. Ron Merkerson, a great example of the U.S. Army. Get to know our fans one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah. Borrow the Bruce Springsteen line. Nothing matters in this whole wide world when you're in love with a Jersey girl. Oh, hey, Tommy, congratulations there, buddy. You get married, you'll be sorry. Put the doll down, Chief. Birmingham's open up a 9-0 lead at home against the Orlando guys. That screws things up a little bit, doesn't Boy, it? Boy, does it ever. If Chicago gets beat tonight, they'll be eliminated if Birmingham wins. Blue 43! The Graham Lee led Birmingham Bolts. We'll keep our eyes on that one all night. Very interesting stuff. Joe Aska with some room around the left side. A gain of five dropped at the 39 by Aaron Humphrey. Jesse, Joe Aska playing like a man possessed tonight. <laughs> Means so much to him cut from this team earlier and now he's one of the go-to guys on this team as they make their run for the playoffs. You know, Rusty did some weird decisions earlier, cutting Joe Aska, not starting Wally Richardson. Blue 20! Come on, come on. Blue 20! Cut! We got the on the ground for Aska. Once again, they're calling his number a lot. That's his sixth carry in the first quarter. Jamie Baisley makes the tackle. After a gain of three, it's been a big opening quarter for the home hitmen. At the end of one quarter of play, eight nothing New York. You're watching the NFL on NBC. NFL Player of the Week is Chicago Enforcers trail as we start the second quarter, but so far tonight. It's been the Joe Aska show that's been most impressive on the ground, guys. John Avery has basically been a non-factor, but credit New York's Red, defense for that. Red, 292! Lord McGuffey and the Hitmen taking over at the 40 and a half. That pass is through the hands of Kirby Dardar incomplete. Hey! Punting unit onto the team. Leo Aragu is on to kick it away. They'll kick from the 42. Up, it's a live up, ball up, at the 33-yard line. Come on, Leo. Jesse, you alluded to it earlier as we look at Leo Aragus is that New York has had a lot of great field position tonight, a lot of chances to score, and they're still only leading 8-0. That may come back to haunt them. Another big kick by Aragus, and it's dropped. Luke Leverson could hang on to it. Luckily, he jumps on it for the enforcers as they take over at the 14. Hey, tomorrow at noon Eastern, don't miss an NBA on NBC Twin Bill. First up, every game is crucial for Reggie Miller and the Pacers as they fight for the final playoff spot in the East. They take on Allen Iverson and the East-leading Sixers. Then it's the final round of coverage of the Bell South Classic. 
And in the nightcap, Latrell Sprewell and the Knicks face Shaq and the Lakers as both teams look to secure home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs. Don't miss all the action starting tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern right here on NBC. Half right, half, half. Trying to establish Avery still. A gain of four up the middle. Ty Talton came up from the safety spot to make the tackle for New York. Well, that could have easily been a loss of about five yards right there, but Avery with a good cutback. It looks like his hamstring's holding up pretty well so far, but he's coming out after that play. Let's go. Even Will Ock zoned off. Will Ock. You're looking at big Israel Raybon there, looking down the line and peering into Kevin McDougal. LaShawn Johnson now in it, running back in place of Avery. That pass is caught. Ron Merker's in there to put the hit on LaShawn Johnson after no gain. Here's what it's like if you're middle linebacker, Ron Merkerson. <laughs> He's got LaShawn Johnson all the way. That's like watching one of those Friday the 13th yeah, movies, yeah. you know that? Okay. It, did it, did. <laughs> or, or the Blair Witch Orlando. Project. <laughs> Orlando! Got that Mike Singletary look. <laughs> Chicago without a first down so far tonight. This is a big oh, one to convert. One got a man wide open. You bet Junior Lord a big gain of 21. And the first first down for the enforcers tonight. <laughs> Play action fake sets this one up. Junior Lord coming underneath. The coverage and flat out beating. Yeah, exactly. Blue 44. So first and 10 now. In the air again for Junior Lord, a gain of five. Hey, what, two yard game? All right. Yeah, you got it. Hum, hum, half right, eight press. No, hum, half left, nine press. Hum, hum, half left, nine press on two. Ready? Second and six, play action fake here. 40, 57. Unless the audible's at the line of scrimmage. That's one way to cover myself. Huh? Absolutely. Be as vague as possible. On the ground for LeJohn Johnson. Making something out of nothing as he gets close to a first down. You know, what has most impressed and endeared Kevin McDougal to his coach, Ron Meyer, isn't the big flashy statistics. It's just the fact that he doesn't make mistakes as a signal caller. Close it down. Close it down. Hey. one on one. Ready? They're starting the second quarter in Birmingham, and the Bolts still lead 7-1 and one Orlando. 9 nothing Birmingham. Green 88! Green 88! Heavily favored Seven. Orlando, might I add. Junior Lord, the man out of the blast. Over the middle, complete, and a lot of running room for Aaron Bailey. There he goes. People missing tackles all over the place. Finally dropped by Ty Talton. A big gain of 30 yards and a first down for Chicago. Yeah, and unlike Kevin McDougal's pass to Junior Lord, which was a little bit behind him, this time Kevin hits his best receiver, Aaron Bailey, in stride. This guy leads the league in average yards per catch with 18.9. He is a class, class receiver here, Aaron Bailey is. And he does something after he catches the ball, too. A dangerous run route there. You know what's interesting, too? Chicago's knocking on the door right now. The New York defense has shut Chicago out for five quarters. They just get the play off. Back in the ballgame is John Avery. This is best run to date. A gain of five around the outside. Maybe if they can open up that passing game, Mike, it'll make things a little easier for John Avery where the defense may not be keying on him as much. And it may be ever so slight because with... Great running backs. It's hard to gauge, you know, when they go into the extra gear. He looks like he's just a little bit slower than normal. But still very effective. You got it. We're regular, right? Nick will be alert. 
191. The Enforcers, the only Three, team with over a thousand yards on the ground. The majority of those belong to this man. Here's Avery again, trying to get away from Bernard Russ. Oh, heads up. Gal holding up that sound dish just got absolutely hammered. <laughs> and she's smiling to tell about it. a girl. <laughs> she's okay, she says. Yeah. a <laughs> girl. Yeah, that's right. Look out, Rachel. Look out, Rachel. Heads up, Rachel. Coming in oh. high. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice audio, huh? She took a harder hit than Adam Lee ever did right there. Rachel, can you describe exactly what happened? Scary. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fred, thanks. Or, or me. You know, whatever it takes to get the best audio possible, that's what this is all about. We'll be right back. <laughs> For this coming week's hit of the week. They got nothing on Rachel. Parabolic microphone be darned. Heads up, Rach. <laughs> At $3,000 will be deducted from your week nine check, sweetheart. Oh. Totally shattered. <laughs> Yeah, they're not worried about Rachel. They're they worried know. about the damn speaker. That's terrible. She might have a little mouse under her eye there. She gets... Oh, Meanwhile, this is the ninth play of the Enforcers <laughs> drive that started at their own 15. Oh, look out. He's got a man from the blind side. McDougal gets it. Oh, oh it's oh. Chicago. Luke Leverson. How'd he make that grab in double coverage? He's an ex-Minnesota kid. That's how. I knew that would come out the first time he did something. I knew you couldn't sit on that for very much longer. Hey, Matt, here's another one. My brother's the wide receiver coach in Minnesota. Coach Luke Leverson. There you go. Nine-yard scoring strike. Man, he went out and grabbed that ball. It was right in front of Joey Ellums. Golden Gopher fans celebrate. Oh, Luke didn't catch a pass in the first five weeks of the season, but he has become one of Kevin McDougal's favorite targets here. And they try the PAT 8 for 20 this year on the point after. McDougal's going to do it himself. Oh, my goodness. Maybe not. Ty Dalton says no, no, no. You think no. Those DBs don't love it when they see a quarterback all by his lonesome like that. I am surprised that Kevin McDougal, I know he's going to protect his throwing shoulder and everything, didn't try to truck this guy. Cutting back was the wrong thing to do there. It was too early to slide into home. First, Rachel took a hit with the mic, and then Kevin McDougal took one trying for the PAT. And for those of you who still miss the Golden Girls in this time zone, we'll have Rue McClanahan in full pads right after this. By Burger King. In the land of burgers, Whopper is king. And by 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. We had a good one here at the Meadowlands. It was 8-0 home team after first quarter, but Chicago's come back with a recent touchdown, and they trail by two. A good one here and a good one between Birmingham and Orlando, and the upstart Bolts still lead Orlando 9-0 in the second. That Orlando offense is an explosive one, so don't drop any change on the floor because you might miss some good action there. Lawrence Welk nowhere to be found. For Don Ho for that matter. Sorry, but Kirby Dardar takes the kick of the four. Tripped up and stumbles ahead to the 23. Double left. Some of the hard hits to date. It's been a good one so far. A playoff berth on the line. Cops, After this cops, weekend, set, just one weekend of regular season play left in the XFL. And these two teams are playing like it's their final chance this year. It is Chicago's. 
McGuffey over the middle, pass complete to Fumble. Cosmo, he loses the football, it's picked up by Chicago. Matt Vincus is all over the fumble, Jinx. And Rusty had the whole first quarter, but now he's losing the second quarter badly. The very things that played the enforcers through the month of February in the old four now plaguing the New York, New Jersey hitman. Come on, Kirby, you gotta hang on to that football. Hey, trying to get that extra yard and it cost him. I guarantee you. Chicago with great field position right, now. They're gonna draw! Two New York turnovers already tonight. That's LaShawn Johnson. Brad Trout came up from the safety spot to make the tackle. You know, with all the talk about John Gabry, LaShawn Johnson, got the pretty fair running back himself. He's second on this team and second in the league with rushes. Touchdowns for five. A young man who overcame... Anthony DeCosmo's having some work done on the uh, on the uniform, or at, at least on the trimmings. They're cutting tape. Whether or not that had anything to do with coughing it up, we'll never know. McDougal looking for a quick screen. Now he's got to look for a secondary receiver, and he's got him. Aaron Bailey's down on his feet. He's dangerous every time he touches the ball, but this time he touched the sideline. But still good enough for a first down. It's a poor workman who blames his tools, right, Matt? I mean, it, that's not the reason why you've dropped the football, Anthony. It is when you get next to the coach. <laughs> McDougal is 78 yards in the air. He's completed his last six passes. Blue 44. It took a while for Chicago to earn a first down, but since getting it, they've been strong offensively. Like John Johnson up to the five-yard line before Chris Mamalanga come up to make the stop. Talking about what a quality running back LaShawn Johnson is out of Northern Illinois, where he led the nation his senior year in rushing. Like Joe Aska, a great north-south runner, Jesse. I hate to keep referring to that, but he gives them another kind of compliments uh, John Avery oh so well. Chicago in the eye formation now. The hand again to LeSean Johnson. Looked like he had a seam. He kept going, and they ruled him down. No fumble on the play. Big break for Chicago, and they'll spot that one around the two-yard line. you got to be careful. You know you want to stretch for that end zone, but you don't want to cough it up at this point in time, and LeSean getting very close on this to turning the football over. Good call, though, by the referee. Down by contact. And you see it from ground level. Clearly, Johnson down on the play. Fair. Green at the eight. Third and call Green it inches now for the enforcers. Again out of the eye, same play, different side. LaShawn Johnson may not have gotten it. Well, you got to kick this one. You want to get the lead. I would say so anyway. What do you think, Mike? Absolutely, Jesse. Kick, kick it or wedge it. Stop huh? the clock! The kick. 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 kick! kick it! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! What? It looked like Ron Meyer wanted a timeout. You know, all those people who argue about running and going for the touchdown is that, you know, everybody should be able to make one yard on fourth down. Well, they didn't make one yard on third down, so why, why could they make it on fourth? Well, not only that, but you want to get the lead. You've got the momentum now. You've taken it away from New York. Chicago's got the momentum, and they're in the lead. Absolutely. Little 18-yard chip shot, good for Andy Crossland, and Chicago has right, taken the lead go. here at the Meadowlands. Kick off coverage! We went in the locker room before the game, and Coach Ron Meyer, Chicago, said, this isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. He's a prophet, because I'll tell you, Rusty Tillman and the New York came out sprinting, but now the marathon runners have taken the lead 9-8. So often a team that plays and rides on a season of emotion like that sees the emotions fade away, and it's hard to regain. Butler Bonote across the 25. Butler Bonote still on his horse down at the 50-yard line. 
The kicker had to do the dirty work, a 35-yard return for Butler Benote. This is how you get your crowd back in a football game. Great special teams playing the Ohio State Buckeye. If it wasn't for Andy Cross, it might have gone all the way. And you notice he protected that football when he knew he was going to get hit. He put both arms around it before he went down. It's a good field position again. Good. 40. Court McGuffey looking to pass. Has to buy some time. He's got a receiver, and it was dropped. Lou D'Agostino just checked into the ball game. Just checked in onto the uh, Hitmen's roster. Quite literally, just checked into the ball game. A slap a uniform on this kid and send him out there, said Rusty Tillman. Well, so far, Court McGuffey, five of nine. 38 yards in the air. Get set, get set. Cut. On a screen pass to Kirby Dardar with plenty of room after the catch of first down for New York. A gain of 14. And that's the man waiting in the wings. Charles Polari, who was the opening day starter at quarterback, and the reason he didn't play tonight, or at least start tonight, according to Rusty Tillman, is Tillman didn't want Polari, a Bronx native, to endure the barbs and the booze and the raspberries that's, that he heard the that's first called three the weeks. Bronx cheer. The Bronx cheer, right. Let's flash back to February. Things were going so bad for this team and Charles Polari. He was booed unmercifully here at the Meadowlands, and that was one of the things that Rusty didn't want to start him because it created a negative atmosphere going in. I wonder, I wonder what kind of reception he'll get if he goes jogging out on the field here with the New York crowd. Yeah, good question. We approach the two-minute warning here in the first half. I think everything will be fine if New York moves in and scores right here. We have indeed hit the two-minute warning. A good one at the Meadowlands. We'll be right back. Simplified if New York wins, they're in. Black 91! Hey. 91! Black 91! <laughs> in the middle of a four-play drive. Now that pass is caught. Complete to Anthony DeCosmo. A gain of seven yards on the play and a first down for New York. See what happens when you get rid of that rubber suit underneath your jersey? That's right. It was the equipment. But then again, he lost it when he went out of bounds right, again. He was lucky he had the sidelines there. McGuffey now 7 for 11, slowly but surely increasing that completion percentage as a result of a good drive here late in the second quarter. They're bringing a lot of people in the box to blitz. McGuffey's got to get rid of it. He's got a receiver wide open, complete down to the 10, down to the 8-yard line, rather, is Zola Davis, his first grab of the night. Good job. The Hitmen's leading receiver had been quiet, but that's a big one here inside of two minutes. Great example of why the Hitmen coaching staff very high on Court McGuffey. In the face of a blitz, he didn't panic. He found his receiver and made the play. Taking the hit as well. And, and give a lot of credit to that offensive line because they picked up the blitz and allowed McGuffey to throw the ball. Boy, and we have seen way too many of those kind of hits this year. And loss of Orlando's Jeff Brom and several others. Well, there's a little spring in the young man's step right now. Him or the Bubba Cam guy? He, well, both of them, actually. They're both all geeked up. They're jacked up. Right. McGuffey got the early Set. yips out of his system, Set. driving effectively here to close Set. out the quarter. <laughs> Quick drop. Look out! They brought that blitz again, and Jason Bray came around the corner and got to McGuffey. They were able to pick up one man, Ray Austin, number 36, but not Jason Bray. He's got to release that football faster, Mike. Trips, hey, listen. Trips right open. 20! Set! 
So it brings up a second and a bit longer into the corner. Was there interference in the corner? You gotta be kidding me. He's not gonna call it. Whoa. Aaron Collins, Gary Cooks rather, had the coverage on Ryan Collins, who looked like he was mugged. A big mismatch, 6-7 Ryan Collins, oh my and 5-11 a Kerry Cooks. How could he not throw the flag on that one? He was holding him as he ran, hit him before the ball got there. That flag burning a hole in somebody's pocket. It looked like uh, hey, bro, Kerry Cooks was trying to mount him 20. from behind, for God's sake. That, that's worth 30 yards in penalties. <laughs> And that one's incomplete. I think that's the XFL's most severe infraction, mounting from behind. <laughs> Here comes a field goal unit now. Boy, three chances from within 12 yards, and they can't get the touchdown. This was the most recent attempt. Well, I'm just happy, Matt, that you're making that call when we're not showing cheerleaders. <laughs> Here's Leo Aragoose from 28 yards out. Watch it left! Watch it left! Man, save! Nice. Oh, man. look out. Aragoose has to shuffle a bit as he approaches the football and still bangs it through. Even the field goal kickers have to show improvisational skills here in this league. Hey, we got to kick this ball away. Hey, hey. Glove save and a dandy by Court Let's McGovey, the holder there. No, no, I have your tackle. All right. Let's go, kick up. And with that, New York reclaims their early lead. This takes good work by the holder. Court McGuffey not just holding his own at quarterback tonight, but also doing the job as a holder, spinning that football and making sure the laces are away from Leo's instep. All right, let's get a and excellent One, two, by three, the ball. kicker also, who had to stop his initial drive to the football and restart it again to throw his timing off. So the clock stopped with 58 seconds left to play. And that early safety's the difference so far, 11 to 9. I like what this guy has done so far, Jesse. I don't know, they're blitzing the hell He's playing he's under control. He seems pretty relaxed out there and having fun. Starts the return at the goal line. And is brought down at the 24. Coming up on NBC. To try and do something on the scoreboard before the halftime intermission. And only one time out. but they'll mark that one at the 42. A big pass completion, a gain of 33 yards. Jesse, this is something you and I have talked about all year long with regards to the play of defensive backs in this league. 21, Donnie Caldwell never looked at the quarterback once, completely turned his back on him, and that allowed didn't Junior know, Lord to make the... And didn't know the ball was coming. Exactly. You Junior Lord just turned around and made a reception. You got to at least look at the quarterback a little bit to see if the ball's coming or not. Oh. That's a big chunk of yardage inside of mid. McDougal airs it out again, has another completion. That's Aaron Bailey who gets out of bounds. And they're working their way down in the field let's go, goal. Let's go, let's go. Half left, half left, half left. And two excellent wait, plays, wait, Mike, on, because they've on, gotten out of bounds hold on, hold on, both times, so they haven't had to use their timeout. Let's go. You know, Aaron Bailey, Bailey who right. just made that big pass completion, uh, told us yesterday that Charlie, the receivers have been a bit, uh, bit frustrated because the passing game works so well in practice no. during the week, but things go cut. bad on game day. That's oh, not been the case eight. tonight. Bailey, three grabs for 50 yards, and they just get it off. 
Tipped and incomplete. Aaron Mc Kevin McDougal got lucky there. That ends a string of eight in a row completed by McDougal. Now, now you're sitting here with a third and one. You got 32 seconds and a timeout. Do you That's dare run the football? That's my fault. Let's go half right. 668 on one. Ready? Come on, D. Let's go, D. Bay. Green, yeah. Green 88. 57. Green 88. <laughs> they do dare run the football with LaShawn Johnson and effectively still on his feet, tackled at the 16-yard line by Ron Murkerson. An 18-yard gain for LaShawn Johnson. Damn. Nice bit of running there. Yeah, that was me. And Chicago will burn their final timeout. And LaShawn Johnson is the real deal. No question about it. This guy has, he's been there and he's done this before. 1998, diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Got chemotherapy, sat out all of 1999 and has come back and realizing his dream again here in the XFL. Now John Avery's been quiet tonight, but that running game in good hands with LaShawn Johnson out there. What about that do-rag, Jesse? Is that a legal affectation to the XFL uniform coming out the back like that? Yeah, we're not we're not the no fun league. We're not out banning them. Could somebody make a tackle by yanking on that thing? I would imagine. I don't think that counts as a face mask. John Avery watching this final drive before halftime. <laughs> McDougal and the enforcers knocking on the door. Hang him high. Oh. And Luke Leverson couldn't get to it. Yeah, they're going to call that uncatchable, I guess. A little bit of contact right there when Luke tried to make his move to the ball. But Brad Trout, the safety who was involved in that play for the hitman, he backed off. Hey, come in, come nice play. Get this right quick. Two right quick. Two on one. Ready? Let's go, let's go. They Three better snap it quick. They're down to five yeah, seconds. Green 88. Green 88. Slide, hush. And they just get it away. Three step drop there. Oh. Incomplete. Had a receiver, Aaron Bailey, on the slant. The pass was poorly thrown. You know, when Aaron looks at this play next week in film study, he's going to berate himself for getting a little case of what they call alligator arms, you know. Hey. Kevin McDougal hung him out to dry a little bit. Didn't want to lay out completely, and I can't say as I blame him. He pulled him back real quick, thought he might have taken a lick from the safety. 989, okay, Fox. Alligator yeah, arms. Yeah. Half right, Fox. Little bitty things. 989 yeah, on one, right? That's what uh, Rogan gets when the check comes. Well, with 16 seconds to go, you got to go to the end zone here, no doubt. You can't mess around with anything short of it. And just get it off once again. Looking into the same corner as McDougal with plenty of time, all kinds of time. Got to find a man, Kev. Airs it out. Touchdown. Was there for it and stayed in bounds. I'll tell you, those Minnesota wide receivers, and they got a coach up there that knows how to train them. <laughs> right, Mike? Let's go, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling my brother up tonight right after the game, baby. I said, we can't give you any more pops than this. But look at the time. That's the amazing thing. He buys the time, keeps scrambling around, finally finds Leverson in the back of the end zone touchdown. <laughs> And Luke not giving up the play as wide receivers are instructed. You see your quarterback in trouble back there. Find a way to get open, and Luke did just that. Yeah. Uh, Two touchdown catches tonight for Cool Hand Luke. McDougal hangs it into the corner. The PAT is good. Mark up seven points for the visitors prior to the halftime intermission. Luke, they call you Hot Hand Luke, obviously for a reason. Two touchdown passes tonight. Great job of coming back to the ball. You know what was this? Uh, had a passer right on. Coverage broke down. I mean, protection broke down. There's scramble rules. Y'all can get open in the end zone. It's that training from Minnesota, is it? Yeah, good training. <laughs> <laughs> if my brother doesn't get elevated to offensive court next year, I'm going to be very surprised. <laughs> I think I'm the only guy without a personal agenda tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Our
Our Bud Light update features a 33-yard touchdown pass from Orlando's Brian Kuklik to Mario Bates. Hey, two Orlando unanswered touchdowns. Look out. Clinching the home field advantage. 13-9. Well, that's turned around a little bit. It was a 9-0 bolt lead for most of the first half, but Orlando with a couple of second-quarter touchdowns. They're in the driver's seat as they get to the halftime intermission. And we've changed the situation around here as well. A Chicago touchdown and successfully converted PAT mean that the visiting enforcers lead it by five. Squid kick that's touched and then bounces out of bounds. Good job, you didn't have to get the dog. Throw! Just kneel it. Just kneel it. Yeah, okay. Just kneel it. Throw, throw! Well, Cord McGuffey's going to take a knee here before halftime. Throw. We're just kneeling it. Kirby, get back here. All right. Without a healthy Wally Richardson. Down. On the color, on the color. Ready? The hitmen have played well offensively in the first half. Without a healthy John Avery, the enforcers can sing the same song. Well, John, you said you were about 70%. I guess right. that was pretty accurate because you haven't had to do a whole lot out there tonight yet. Yeah, as long as uh, we keep doing what we're doing offensively, those guys getting open, LaShawn stepping up, running the ball, we're going to be okay. Uncle Bobby, I got you. Defensive foul lets you decline the penalty. Do you want the penalty? Or if you decline it, the half is over. We'll, we'll take it's a it. five yard penalty. It's only five yards. Defense has more than 11 men on the field. By rule, the half cannot end on the defensive foul. Five yard penalty, it's still first down. We'll extend the half for no. one no. untimed no. down. They're not going to kneel down yeah, again, if, are if, they? Yeah, if they do, it's ridiculous to. Uh, Decline the penalty. Take they, a shot. Throw you know, a Hail Mary. Maybe they didn't practice that enough in <laughs> practice. They figure they can get an extra snap out here to work on it. If, in fact, they take a knee, this will be the I longest huddle play. before doing so in the history of the nah, they're gonna They're going to throw the bomb Give here. It or shot. Give it a shot. Not might get 20. another penalty. We might be able to talk about Minnesota. Oh, again. fumble. Look at that. Recovered by the hitmen, and that's how the first half ends. Hot hand Luke is what Chris Raggy called him. He's taken two touchdown balls into the locker room at halftime. Court, you head into the locker room trailing. At points in the first half, it looked like they held the ball a little long. Is that something you'll be thinking about at halftime? Well, when we, we got down here close, they just they started sending everybody, and I couldn't find anything. We just got to keep it up, hold them on defense, and, and take advantage of the opportunities when we get them on offense. A well, great action in the first half here at the Meadowlands. We'll follow these athletes into the locker rooms, and we'll be back after this word from your local stations. the hitmen's leading tackler there to make the stop. Well, Mike, I'm really kind of surprised to see Avery starting this second half. Oh. Uh, especially the good running LaShawn Johnson did. I, you know, I agree with you. I would, I would rest Avery unless you had to use him. And John's coming out right now. You know, the thing about hamstring injuries, you can get all the treatment in the world, but they kind of leave it their own, on their own accord. They decide when they want to leave your body. You can tell he is, he is not the same back tonight. 3-22. It is LaShawn Johnson into the tailback spot. McDougal's got to look out for the heavy rush. Here they come. They get to the throwing hand. Ooh. Almost picked off. Oh, he Chris was, Malalonga had a chance at a pick. He was lucky. He threw that to a defensive lineman that doesn't have good hands. Hey. All right. Flank right. Flank right. Liz, 865 drag. Let's go. Blake right, Liz, 865 drag on one. Ready? Right. Chicago 4 of 7 and third down conversions in the first half. Boy, they take advantage of every nanosecond on that flight clock. There's the Mark Wilson lobber. <laughs> and it's complete to Ty G. Armstrong. That was the 
drag receiver, the tight end coming across the middle. That was a dangerous pass to throw, though, just lofting at that high in the air. That had hang time like a punt. In homage to the Rip Sewell Epis pitch. <laughs> Looked like Matt Sandwich. Come here. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you get it done, just as long as you get it done. It was so wide open, that drag route by the tight end that Kevin could get away with it. Good enough for a first down, perhaps, as they bring the chains out to measure. The scoreboard already called that a first down. We'll see how generous the placement was. Ready? First down. By plenty. You know, Kevin McDougal, three and one since he's come on as the Chicago enforcer starter. Here's a guy who's looked at himself. He calls himself the underdog. When he was at Notre Dame for his senior year, getting ready for his senior year, Coach Lou Holtz advised him to transfer schools because he wanted to start Ron Paulus. Yeah, that's a fine how do you do. He just led him to a Cotton Bowl appearance, and, uh, and Coach Holtz says, you know what, you might want to get out of here because we got this Ron Paulus coming in, a freshman. Green at the eight. He is well conditioned to the adversities of football. Downfield and complete. He's got Aaron Bailey, a first down for Chicago, and that passing game is healthy. Thank you very much. Let's go, let's go, let's go. A 19 yard gainer made possible by a sweet pump fake. And his go to guy, his roommate on the road, Aaron Bailey. And he squeezed that into a real tight hole. And one of the reasons he's able to do this, he thanks his Arena Football League background for being able to do that. The field smaller in the Arena League, you can find those tight seams like that. And that was a terrific throw because he threw into double coverage. Green at the eight. Green at the eight. Here comes the blitz. McDougal with play action makes the man miss and finally throws it away. Joey Ellums had a clean shot at him, but ever evasive, McDougal stayed on his feet. Chicago starting to amass huge numbers in the no, total plus. offense. And that's amazing because they had virtually nothing the after the first man. quarter. I think four Time yards. Out, Chicago driving with timeout on the field. We're underway in the second half. So Chicago, five plays into a drive, 47 yards into a drive. And the Leverson little reverse play, and it just gets back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine number 95, oh. Dwayne Saab, all six you know, foot five, 247 pounds of him coming at you, and you're a wide oh. receiver. You're a wide receiver looking for a reverse, oh. hoping there's no one out in front of you, and all you do is see those black and blue shirts everywhere around you. P prepare to meet your maker. <laughs> mm. hunt, hunt. Here's the view from the Blair Witch Project cam as uh, Jesse Ventura has teamed it. <laughs> McDougal over the middle. Pass complete caught by the ex-Jet Fred Coleman. Good job, Smoke. Kevin McDougal has really got the rhythm going now. Now we're going half left, half left. Nine press, half left, nine press, first down. Half left, nine press, first down. Hey, Ready? Hey. McDougal already with more completions and more yardage than in the entire game last week, week eight. <laughs> On the ground, LaShawn Johnson, no love. Tawambi settles on the tackle. Guys, just talked with John Avery a few moments ago. As you can see, he's no longer holding his helmet. Asked him, John, how are you feeling? He said, you know what? I haven't re-aggravated the hamstring, but I don't have that burst that I need okay, to be baby. successful on the Good field. Job, Looks like he's pretty much done for the night. Good job, boy. Good job. Good job, boy. The best locker in the league. The best locker in the league right here. The best locker in the league. Well, that injury had to be worse than what Coach Meyer led us to believe at the outset of the game. So John Avery reduced to cheerleader tonight on the sidelines. He can only watch as his teammates try to make the pass. Oh, and that was picked oh, off. Man. Joey Ellums, there goes the hurricane, the two-way player from Indiana, still on his feet. He returns it all the way, hit man, touchdown. <laughs> 76 yards on the pick and score. And the hitmen go back on top.
Well, Kevin McDougal had been living large tonight. In fact, he got away with a couple of passes he shouldn't have thrown. This one he didn't get away with, and it floated on him. He threw in the coverage right there, double coverage, Jesse. Easy pick for Joey Ellums. And just when Chicago thought they had everything going for them, they're driving down, getting into scoring range, now they're trailing. That might have been a million reception right there. Here's the point after drive. Court McGuffey play action. It's good. Ryan Collins, the big tight end. And my, how the tide has turned in Jersey. A week ago, New York, New Jersey, the Hitman had not scored a single touchdown via the defense. Ron Murkerson returned a fumble for a touchdown last week. Here, Joey Ellums returns this interception for a pick. A defensive back's dream. Joey, I'm not angry anymore. Gordon McGuffey finds Ryan Collins for the PAT. Joey, did he go to the well once too often with that pattern and you were just waiting? First of all, I just want to thank God for the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to be here. Secondly, I mean, you know, you just got to go make a play sometimes. Thank God I was a man this time. Happy birthday, Aaron and Harrison. Hi, Mom. Hi, Granny. How y'all doing? I love you. New York back on top. We'll be right back. Four lead changes tonight. The most recent puts the home team back on top by two. This is Corey Ivey. Corey Ivey around the corner. And run out of bounds by Leo Aragus at the 51 yard, the 50 yard line. This is how an interception starts. It's from the bench. Let's go, Dime Pen Zone Blitz. Play him tight! Play him tight, Joey! Joey, play him tight! Play him tight! Joey Ellum's playing him tight, but watching the quarterback. Kevin McDougal telegraphed that pass, Jesse, and when you watch a quarterback's eyes, good things will happen. Well, we, talk, we talked about that earlier, Mike, that they weren't watching, and that time they did and got an interception for a touchdown, but great kickoff return, excellent field position. Look at this. Oh, does John Johnson break the big one? Still on his feet. Burns his safety and tackled at the 22. Damon Wheeler and Ty Talton had to get to him as he broke it for 25 big yards. And Chicago right back knocking on the door again. This, what a ball game. This is a luxury that not too many teams in this league have. You lose a quality back, maybe the best back in the league, in John Avery, and you can put a little John Johnson in. A guy who's got a lot of experience, who's got a great burst, who wants it bad. 61 yards in a night so far for LaShawn Johnson and Chris Mamalonga, who is a huge key to that New York defensive front leaving the game right now. Yeah. Oh, that's not good news for New York. Let's hold you off a little bit. Yeah. Ron Meyer Ron and his McCall. staff yeah. love this guy. Now, Ron Meyer coaches the other team, bear yeah. in mind. <laughs> and Meyer certainly will not be among those weeping to see him leaving the field. <laughs> In all fact, right. Meyer can't believe how this guy's not playing on a Super Bowl championship team. Blue 88! Blue 88! Now New York without the key on the line. Fumble, McDougal jumps on it, however. The thing you ought to take a look at is the center for the Chicago Enforcers, Paul Janis. His left hand is encased by a giant cast. There it is right there. I don't know how the heck you, you center the ball like that. He said it's not a problem. What is a problem is you with, can't hold a guy. With one hand, Mike. Yes, That's how you do it. My God, it's like Richard <laughs> Keel. Like Richard Keel in the longest <laughs> yard. <laughs> That's a heck of a weapon there, huh? Let me tell you. Just still give us his most famous line, Matt. <laughs> Why? 191! Oh, mean machine. Oh, my goodness. And it's picked off. David Wheeler, his third pick of the year, and McDougal still down. Not again. And now we got a flag after the play. Tempers flaring. Meanwhile, the Chicago signal caller is still flat on his back. 
Just easy deep press. Put that. After the play was over, personal foul, number 91, Chicago, oh. for unnecessary foul. Nice easy press. Nice easy press. Uh, no. Just stop the window. Well, this is what happened to Kevin McDougal after the pass. As no, you can no, see, they're no, no. still Three, attending one, to him. Here's how he went down. Oh, no. Big Vernon Crawford got him from the blind side. You know, Ed, that was not a dirty hit by Vernon Crawford by any stretch of the imagination. Not, a, not at all. And here's the great interception right there by Wheeler. He's out. He was out. He was out. He was out. He was out. Hey, come, come. And that was the penalty on, after down, the play. Hubert Toplarin with a lot on the line. The not, a, not at all. And here's the great interception right there by Wheeler. He was out. He was out. He was out. He was out. Hey, come, come. And that was the penalty come on, come after down, the play. Hubert Toplarin with a lot on the line. We'll be right. And a big interception has given the ball back to the home and a home hitman rather with 644 left in the third. Set. Set 40. Vernon Crawford was the guy that applied the hit on Kevin McDougal and knocked him out of the ball game. Then the pick, and now it's the offensive unit on the field. Court McGuffey up top and incomplete looking for Zolda Davis. Basically, uh, he's got a next screen, and uh, he got the new knife out of him. He's going to get some cover. I'll let Coach out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be on. Kevin McDougal is one of those guys who you got to grab and drag off the field. And we'll, we'll see if he's good to go. If not, the plan B quarterback for Chicago is a guy they acquired in a trade with Memphis after week three of the season, Craig Whalahan. We might be seeing the ex-Charger tonight. Okay, yeah, I see that. Yeah, you got to be ready for that. Uh, just execute the checks. Gotcha. And let's move it. Gotcha. Kevin, you know, he, he wants to throw that uh, fade too much. Gotcha. Kevin McDougal going to the locker room for it. precautionary x-rays, a neck sprain, the early diagnosis. They just get the play off before the time clock expires. McGuffey's going to head off the run and won't get very far. A gain of two yards on the play. A three and out by New York as the punting unit comes onto the field, and we'll see in moments. Whalahan will get his chance. Greg Whalahan will make his uh, his first appearance tonight in less than ideal circumstances. This will be a live ball at the 48-yard line. Corey Ivy and Luke Leverson there to return it. Another big kick by Leo Aragu. My goodness. Drag down to the 34. Flag on the play. Hey, you got Well, we'll see the new signal caller for the enforcers when we come back. Top of Chicago, 18-16, 4-35, left in the third quarter. Corey Ivy, late at night when you're sleeping, Corey Ivy comes creeping around. A bank and a hand up the middle of Hassan Johnson up the middle. Another good run, good for a first down. We check in with the Orlando-Birmingham game in Birmingham, and it's still Orlando by a point in the third. Right, two jab Y or three jab Y O on two. Ready? Three, three. A 12 yard run for LaShawn Johnson and another Chicago first down. Three, 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 three. Set, hot, hot. 
Wheelahan so far, two handoffs, and why not with LaShawn Johnson running as effectively as he is? That's a gain of nine. Let's go back. Let's go back to that game in February 24th. Granted, the conditions were horrible, but Chicago's offensive line was decimated. Paul Janis was out with that broken hand. Rob Murphy, who hadn't played center since college at Ohio State, was the new center. They were in total disarray. They had lost Octavius Bishop the previous week in that game, but tonight they are really doing a heck of a job, Jess. They're running the football. You know, as good as L.A. has the two good quarterbacks, Chicago has two great running backs. <laughs> Boy, nothing this time as Charles Wiley had checked into the backfield, dropped for a loss of three. Israel Raybon and Chris Mamalanga, who's back in the ball game, combined for the tackle. Raybo surprisingly quiet tonight until there. And look at Mau Mau. He single-handedly whooped Chicago's offensive line in that last game. And like we were talking about earlier, surprised he, he's not a Super Bowl caliber player. Let's go. Wheel of hands. <laughs> Green 80. And he's talking a little bit to the new Green signal caller of the enforcers. <laughs> Pass is complete. He finds Aaron Bailey. I told you you lost it, Will. Well, they're not missing a beat with Craig in there right now. Right. Four belly. Ghost. Let's go. We're going half right. Four belly ghost. On one, right? This is the fifth play of the drive for Chicago. Green, Lima had a cool yeah, yeah. customer off the bench. Oh. And off up the middle. That's Charles Wiley again. The reason Wailahan's in there is because quarterbacks have been punished tonight. Vote away! Vote away! Tonight, no different from any night in the XFL. That's Court oh, McGuffey. Oh, oh. He's taking his Half share right. of licks as well. And another man down. That's Israel Raybon down. They can ill afford to be without the tackles. Mama Longa went down earlier. He's back. And now Raybon is hurt. Hey. <laughs> oh. Chris Mama Longa's case, I thought it was just a matter of him being a little fatigued and giving him a rest, but. This might be a little more serious in the case of Israel Raybon. The first time these two teams played one another, Chicago and New York, the New York defensive tackles combined for 13 tackles and seven sacks. That's because that running game is so important for Chicago. New York was there to answer the bell because those interior linemen were so strong. Yeah, if you look at the total yards right now, Chicago 291, New, New York, New Jersey 115, and they got most of that in the first quarter. Green 99! Yep, they got the Green lead. Green 99! Those turnovers loom large. Leverson out of the forward blast, handoff to LaShawn Johnson, a loss of a yard. There's Mau Mau again, baby. Hold up, hold up. Huh? What do I say? That's all you want. Side man, No text, no text, no text. Roll it, roll it in. You know what I'm saying? That's why. See what Janice does with that injury. And the glove. Quick drop by Wheelahan. Airs it out, and he's got a nice man. Catch. complete junior Lord. Beautiful catch by Lord, keeping his feet in bounds and stretching out for the ball. This was a pro throw by Craig Wheelahan here, too. Junior Lord. Oh, we'll talk about breaking off a pattern. And right there on the money, Wheelahan. And a first down for Chicago. Uh, Junior right. Lord not Zero even worried about on the one-foot right. inbounds XFL rule. Might as well get them both down there if you can. Hey, Just showcasing his skills. Inside of 30 seconds now in the third quarter. Wheelahan hands to LaShawn Johnson. 
met head on and tackled by Ty Talton to gain a five. They are running to the strength of that New York, New Jersey defense and doing a great job of it. Time ticks down on the third quarter. There's one quarter left. One of these teams is headed to the Meadowlands. Tonight's XFL action. This one here in New York, in action in Birmingham, might well determine who goes to the playoffs in that remaining Eastern Division spot. That was LaShawn Johnson for five yards. And speaking of Orlando and Birmingham, the Rage on top, 13-12 in the fourth. And this is a thumbnail sketch of the playoff picture. If Chicago wins tonight here and Orlando beats Birmingham, Birmingham is out of the playoff picture and Chicago would have to win next week or an Orlando, New York loss, Chicago gets to the playoffs. A timeout on the field. We'll try to put further context to this playoff picture as we're in the fourth quarter in the Meadowlands. We'll be right back. Chicago is nine plays into a drive that's eaten up over five minutes on the clock. We we're with Kevin McDougal. Kevin, you took quite a shot. What is the diagnosis? Yeah, it's just a little neck sprain. Uh, I'll be all right. I'll be back. Uh, you know, the doctor's doing a good job back there. So, you know, I'll be back playing, so I'm not worried about it. Question is when is he going to be back? Right now, Craig Whalahan doing a great job of guiding this and forces offense. Absolutely. I'd be a little hesitate to make that switch back eight. right now. Green and First eight. and 10 of the 15 for Chicago. LaShawn Johnson stumbles for a couple of yards. Ron Merkerson came up to make the stop for the hitmen. Big Merck, a guy whose father is a pro boxing trainer. Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr., Ray Mercer, among others. Pretty distinguished list of clients. No, no nickel. He is right, he is right. But even Big Merck has been ineffective Green, in trying 55. to stall the Chicago drive now Green, on the 12th 55. play. That hunt. LaShawn Johnson again, and why not? He's got a corner. Oh, baby. He oh. loses the football. default a guy who has been playing so well tonight LaShawn Johnson he saw that end zone but well, when you know contact is coming you've got to have both hands on the football you know that end zone is close and that was a clear fumble no doubt about it you can see he takes the hit right there the ball pops loose before he's down on the ground Talton with the recovery. Talton with the hit. Now McGuffey and the hitman offense on the field. Joe Aska with a run across to the 11-yard line, a gain of eight. Ty Talton making the hit and the recovery that changes possession on the two-yard line. And now it's up to the Chicago defense to step up and hold New York right here and get the ball back after a beautiful drive. Stop the enforcer offense. Over 100 yards tonight for LJ. But the play he'll remember most, that one that just the curve. Joe Aska, a big cog in the first quarter for the hitman. The last two weeks, you and John Avery both run real hard. You're going for the extra yards, but you guys have been coughing the ball up. You know, I just want to win. Uh, that last play, you know, stuff happens. You know, trying to make something happen. And uh, they just got a good hit and knocked the ball loose. But uh, I'll be back. Pro, pro. And it was a big hit indeed. There's no faulting LaShawn Johnson about yeah. leaving that football out yeah. over the goal line. He just took a big hit that time. Ty, you made the hit, you recovered the fumble, and then you took the ball off the field with you. Oh, yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank God for this opportunity. Say what's up to the Tom family. And, you know, we just got to make plays as a defense. And right now, this is our playoff game, and I'm playing it like it's my last game. What's up, SSS? 
Why did you steal the ball? Hey, this ball goes to my parents. Every ball I get goes to mom and dad for getting me where I'm at today. They are making right. the plays tonight, are the hitmen. Hold on just a second. Three, Three Chicago turnovers. All right, we yeah. got Tim Slot left. Check 36 slant or 24 lead on one on one. Ready? Well, as you mentioned earlier, Mike, Chicago winning the battle of total yardage but trailing on the scoreboard. Court McGuffey with 25. a check with me play at the hey, line get, of scrimmage. Get in dock. He'll take a look at what 25. the enforcers have on defense and adjust Stand accordingly. Black 25! Black 25! They'll let the run play from their own 14, Joe Askin. Has a seam up the middle. And close to a first down. Just over 11 minutes left, perhaps, in the life of one of these two teams in action tonight. Orlando has clinched a playoff spot in the East. Chicago and New York are battling for that second and final spot within this division. Quite simply put, if Chicago wins, they're still alive. If New York wins and Orlando wins tonight, it's the Hitmen that go to the postseason dance. Met at the line of scrimmage. Jamie Baisley there to smoke Joe Askup. And that's what's happening in the other contest tonight. Orlando on top, 16-12 at Birmingham in the fourth. And with a playoff spot on the line, both these teams playing with a sense of urgency. One of the best middle linebackers in the game in the XFL, Jamie Baisley having quite a season for the enforcers. Set. Red, 20. Third and short down for the hitmen. The short yardage alignment out there. Aska's got the first down for New York. And the non-existent running game from the first quarter is now starting to come back for the New York hitmen right when they need it to chew up some clock and get some field position back. Aska was ripping off huge chunks of real estate in the first quarter. New York went away from that kind of offense. Get in there on this, okay? We're going on two. Dot right. Dot right, 38, toss on two, on two, ready? You know, last set, week, set. New York with 30 yards on the ground set. as a team. Set, Tonight, Joe Aska's set. ripped set. off, to use your term, 80 by himself. This is Aska again, and tripped up for a loss. Met by Jamie Baisley once again. Little help from Ray Austin on the tackle. A loss of a yard on the play. Watch him out here. Watch him out, Torch. Set. Blue 20. Blue 20. Hot. To ask him one more time. They're calling his number often here in the fourth quarter. No gain on the play as Jason Chorak came up to make the tackle. Oh. In basketball action today, Arizona with a big win over Michigan State. The reigning champs are done, and the Wildcats will go to the final dance. Maryland Duke game. How about Duke coming back from a huge deficit for a win? Takes one, takes one. And that'll be your NCAA championship matchup. Little swing pass out to Dito Filiaw. A gain of four on the play. The Hitmen defense has been strong tonight. By my count, that's one, two, three Chicago turnovers forced by the Hitmen tonight, and my, have they been costly. It's a lot of ball at the 42. Eric is with another big punt. Ivy backed up to his own 11. Up ahead to the 32, a flag on the play. Let's go, baby. It's time. Plenty of time left time, for baby. the Chicago Enforcers. It's time. And a half 
minutes left in one of these two teams season tonight. The flag we saw prior to the break was a 10 yard clipping penalty and marks the ball back to the 18 yard line of the enforcers. That's where Craig Wheelahan takes over. Little out is complete to Aaron Bailey. No gain on the play, however. The guy that makes the stop once again, Ty Talton. And there's well, another hitman down on the ground. He's getting up and staying in, though. Whether it's Kevin McDougal or Craig Wheelahan, the Chicago passing game has been in check tonight, and they're doing this, guys, against a pretty good pass defense. Number one in the league, two in total defense. Good to see Kevin McDougal back, at least warming up on the sideline after he was diagnosed with a, a slight case of dizziness and a slight neck sprain. And you heard him say himself, He's okay as they escorted him into the locker room. You know, about the time they stretch check. this defense and go deep. We haven't seen a deep pass in a long time. Green 88. Set on. Play action. Over the middle and batted away. Damon Wheeler got between Wheelahan and Aaron Bailey to deflect it. They heeded your call, Jesse, but Damon Wheeler, these guys, early in the game, they were beat. Set on. Excellent play right here. Reads the ball, sees it right off the quarterback's hand. Nice defensive play. And John Avery, as we mentioned at the top of this telecast. Got the morning, baby. Got the morning. Got the morning. The strained hamstring muscle did start, but he's out for the rest of the game and not much of a factor. The XFL's leading rusher. A big third down attempt here. A little completion out to LaShawn Johnson. Trying to run for the first down. Stop short of the first. A gain of seven as Ron Merkerson prevented him from getting that all-important first down. First down, baby, okay? All right, Let's go. got you. Go to your read, baby. All right. Hey, Under six care. minutes. Oh, We're going to the wire. It's a live ball at the 44-yard line. Andy Crossland on to punt Kirby Dardar, the receiving man for New York. Dardar begins the return at his own 18. Running the wrong way. Bobbled the football and dropped at the 15-yard line. Big special teams play left for the enforcers. There's about five minutes left in somebody's season tonight. And if the Bolts can hang on for a victory and New York can hang on here, Chicago is out. Set. Red 24. Court McGuffey takes over at his own 15-yard line with just over five minutes of football left tonight. Joe Aska falls for a yard. Well, he leads it by two, but it has been an emotional, frustrating night for Coach Rusty Tillman. <laughs> it's one way to cool off your soup. Whenever the head coach does the motorboat thing with his lips, <laughs> you know there's a lot on his mind. Fake 35 gun. Thank you. They got to get some production here out of Court McGuffey, their backup quarterback who started tonight in place of the injured Wally Richardson. Red 40. Red 40. Hunt. McGuffey 9 of 16 with 81 yards in the air. Rolling right, dumps it off, and that one's complete to the tight end. Ryan Collins, good for a first down. And that's a huge first down. Keeps the clock running down to 410. Collins a huge target at 6-7. Okay. Deuce. <clears throat> we got to start blitzing him, Pete. Right now. You're... Set. Blue 36. Where are you? Blue 36. Hunt. <laughs> Joe Aska. <laughs> Runs into a pack of tacklers. A gain of four. 
and you heard Ron Ron Meyer yell to his defensive coordinator, hey, we got to start blitzing. we got to make something happen. He understands the urgency of the situation. 3.27 remaining New York with a two-point lead. These guys lose. Birmingham hangs on. Chicago enforcers are out of the playoffs. Let's There's remember, though, Chicago's three, defense, five. if they come up and stop them now, look how wide. quick okay, they Willie scored be before wide. the okay. end of that first okay. half. So you can come off that and come back to... That their defense has got to come up with plays now. Chicago. Oh, there's five yards against the hitman. Well, that's one way to help the defense. Last week, Chicago induced five turnovers. Their defense was knocking the ball out of their hands all night long. So far tonight, Rusty Tillman's hitmen have coughed it up twice. Is that uh, Robert Hunt from San Francisco? Only the second penalty of the night against the hitman. Makes for a second and nine for Court McGuffey. Joe Ask has got a hole. He breaks the big fumble, and there it is. Chicago gets the big fumble. They've been praying for. Quincy Coleman scoops it up. See what they're in here. Where are they at? At the end of a 13-yard run, Joe Aska loses the football. And Ron Meyer's prayers are answered in the Meadowlands. And remember, they only need a field goal. They're just down by two. Kevin McDougal back at quarterback for Chicago. Going for the downs, Bailey had a step on his man, flag on the play. Joey Ellums, who had the big interception and touchdown return, is going to be flagged for P.I. here. And that's good. And what a costly mistake here. And an iffy call. Boy, that's a big game type call to make in that situation in a play that looked like it could have been called incidental contact. And, and they only need a field goal. They can run the ball now, too, and eat up all the clock. Hold up. Hold up. Two minutes. Amazing. Uh, we couldn't have asked for any more drama. Two minute warning. We'll be right back. We're going to stay, Matt. Oh, we're going to stay? Yeah, I told them. We're not going anywhere. Two-minute warning. We're going to stay right here. I want to do that again. Try that again. Get some seasoning, Matt. Well, we're not going anywhere with two minutes left and a two-point game on the line. Okay. <laughs> and this is as it should be. Let's go with Belly. Go with Belly. Make it a spot. Right. I'm going to go with Belly the first. Now I'm going to go right. three wide. Give it to him again. Give it to him again. Another Bud Light update from Birmingham, Alabama. The Birmingham Bolts with a huge play. Defensive back Eric Sloan with an interception and a 60-yard touchdown return. Well, Eric Sloan gives them new life. They're clinging to a playoff possibility. Well, that's his third pick of the night. An XFL record. Now they lead 24 55. LaShawn Johnson stutters ahead for two yards. And there's that update, courtesy of Bud Light. Birmingham has opened up a bigger lead at home against Orlando, doing their best to really cloud up this playoff picture. Jesus! New York calls a timeout. They're second to the half. Should Chicago score a win? Listen, they are going to run the ball again, and they'll probably run it inside. I want to go, I want to go, um, big tornado. All right, let's go under one side and tell them we're going to run it again now. Everybody stay in their gaps. Let's go. All 
34 points tonight. Came in the first two and a half quarters. Half left. Pack half left. Quick slip shoot on one. Ready? Well, Rusty thinks Chicago's are going to run the football. I don't think they are. Green at the eight. Green at the eight. There's the pump fake. A wide open oh, tight end. A wide open tight end. Willie Tate. Touchdown, Chicago. Well, they fooled Rusty Tillman on that. He thought it was going to be an inside running play. They faked the handoff, went back, found the tight end wide open down the sidelines. A big touchdown. Coach Adamley called it right. A 19-yard TD pass, and the enforcers have taken a lead. Little play action right there. Wide open. And as it should be, Kevin McDougal, who missed two series because of the injury, coming back out of the locker room with that sprained neck, and then finding Willie Tate for what should be or could be the decisive touchdown. The former Oregon Duck with a huge TD reception. Here's the point after try. LaShawn Johnson, it's good. The fifth lead change of the game has made this an urgent moment for coach Rusty Tillman. For who? Wheels? What are you talking about? Oh, you mean on the kickoff return? All right. We still got Kirby, let him go left side. Let him go left side. How big was that PAT? What do we like, what do we like best? Special left or Nothing. wedge left? Because they had to have a touchdown anyway, Matt. They well, didn't even need that point after. It go. looked hey. good, though, Jesse. It, it did. Me. Oh, yeah. It I'll, looked great. I'll tell you what, it was big, it was big for LaShawn Johnson, who had that costly fumble that could have put this game away for Chicago. It restored his confidence if he ever lost it. Yeah, but he don't need confidence. It's their defense that needs confidence now, Mike. They, they have, have stood up to the have, test so far They tonight. don't have to worry about the offense with 1.41 to go. It's all on the Chicago defense and Rusty Tillman's New York offense. And their rookie quarterback, Court McGuffey. Tune in tomorrow to catch more XFL action as this playoff picture gets even cloudier. First on TNN, Tommy Maddox in the extreme look to lock up first place in the West against the Maniacs. Then at 7 Eastern on UPN, it's a matchup of two teams battling it out for the final playoff spot in the West as the Demons travel to the desert to take on the Outlaws. That's the XFL tomorrow. Butler Benote picks up the kick at the 12-yard line. Still in bounds and finally run out at the 34. Well, this is it. Back to the wall for Court McGuffey. Tell, tell Ryan we're going to go flex off if we go speed. But she tells him. And they won't be running the ball here. Hey, hey. They'll be throwing it every down. Listen, listen. Hey, we got speed right out, right off the gate, okay? No, I'm going to go underneath. Slide left, 906, read wide. I want to. Motion, all kinds of pretty yellow flags. Jason Shorak was among those a little too eager. Let's go! Let's go! If both of the teams that lead tonight, and we're speaking of Chicago here and Birmingham in the other game tonight in XFL action, if both of those teams hang on to win, all teams in the Eastern Division are still alive for the playoffs. Red 20. Chicago Red still has a chance 20. to control their own destiny because if they win tonight and next week, it doesn't matter what Birmingham does. Chicago will go to the postseason, but New York trying to make that as difficult as they can. A first down on the grab by Kirby Dardar, a gain of 15. And with the five-yard offside penalty in that catch, they're in Chicago territory. Less than half the field to go. Right, right, on one. Here we go. Without Get question, up. the biggest defensive series of the year for the enforcers. They bring the blitz. McGuffey on the run. He's across the line and out of bounds. A gain of three. Boy, when you consider the plight of these two teams, 1-0-3, oh, 1-0-4 oh, to start the season and to be here tonight. Open. Just get him out there open. Slide. 
384, shallow wide. Okay, here Watch we, that takes two. Let's go twins Watch left, two. slide left, 384, shallow ride on one on one. Ready? Gun, gun, gun. Set, red 20. Red 20. Hot. The Guppy picks up a good block over the middle and complete. Anthony the Cosmo wrestled down at the 15. What a big there throw by there. Court the Guppy. Right. Right. How does a guy get that open when you're in a prevent defense? Look at that. The help comes over from the other safety way too late playing that way too soft, Mike. And Dorian hold Bruce up. saving the go. touchdown for Chicago. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Court McGuffey picks a great time to execute his longest completion of the night, and it's made Ron Myers' night a little more difficult. Hey, give me uh, 572. Look, don't worry. This we're going to go hot, dry, split. Just Wait, over a minute left wide, here. Wide, wide. 384, right. shallow wide, on one on one, ready? One. First and 10 on the 15 for New York. Set. Chicago with the it's dime over, package, over. six defensive 20. backs. <laughs> Same play. Incomplete this time oh. as he overthrows oh, 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 his oh, oh, tight oh. end. And that's McGuffey's oh, first oh, incompletion right. in his last five oh, attempts. Yeah. Well, they'll get three right, more shots to the end zone down, for sure. Right, he's talking to the quarterback, so I don't like interrupting him. Well, I know, but I mean, I see that. I, I don't know if he sees it or not. Set! Red 89! Red 89! Hot. Little screen pass, Kirby Gargar with a little bit of running room down at the five. Dorian Blue made the all important stop. Time rolls at 45 ticks and counting. Flex right! No huddle offense. 212, flat block! 212, flat block! Quick slide left. McGuffey trying to call the play at the line of scrimmage. Flushed out of the pocket. Flag, Flag on the play. Pass is caught at the goal line. No. Pass is not caught at the goal line. They rule that Ryan Collins trapped it. And let's check out the penalty play if it's serial anyway. Holding. New York. Are we going to have third down? Now what do you do, Mike? Do you take the fourth down or do you move them back? I say you got to move them back. Move them back. You got to move them back. Down right there. Come back here now. Take it back. They look like they're going to decline this penalty. The players want to send them back, that's for sure. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. Hey! Two zone. Watch the screen. That's just the okay. third penalty we'll tonight on the hit, man. But what an important one it is with inside a minute left to go. Just an indication of how much better this team has been playing now. Slide right, 272, corner angle, all one-on-one. -on -one. Ready? Underneath, underneath. New York can still achieve a first down without scoring if they can get it inside the five. 20. Red, 20. Hot. McGuffey flushed out once again on the run. Let's it fly, and it's Flag. knocked away. Two flags, two more flags. He crossed. What was it? Crossed the line of scrimmage, Court okay, McGuffey so did. Go five yards and lost five, it down. Hit, huh? ten, 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 and even worse, the right. loss of down. Right. Well, well, then, now now the season's down to one play. Right. It's a loss of down. Right. What a Hold finish. Up. Illegal forward pass. The quarterback was beyond the line when he threw the ball. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. 
Loss of down. Hey, you got to take a time Fourth down. Four down. And there's a 10-second runoff on the clock by Rule. Reset the clock to six seconds. This is it. This is it. Well, you couldn't throw anything else Why into that equation <laughs> to make it more dramatic. Loss it down. Loss it 10 seconds. And there is six seconds left. How good is this? John Avery, who has missed John. most of the second half, agonizing over and, this and thing. And he won't watch. I watched John earlier. He puts the towel over his head and looks down no, at the ground. He won't even watch. New York has to spend their final oh. time out. <laughs> You don't burn 10 seconds. You don't burn 10 seconds. Two. I'm gonna tell Koss to run a scene. I'm gonna go 272. But I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna go flex left, slide right, 272, corner angle. But I'm gonna tell Koss to run a scene down the middle. I'm gonna hit him for a touchdown. Gordon, now you don't want. You don't need. Hey, 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 Koss. Yeah. Run a read route, right in the middle, just cover court. two. We're on the back. Don't go two, go okay. all vertical, all vertical. We got flex right, slide left, 272, corner angle, you're running all a vertical. read. All vertical, don't run twos, Court. Yeah, go all the vertical. end zone. Here we go, all one, all one, ready? No. And keep your eyes on New York's number 84, Anthony DeCosmo. He's the guy that Court McGuffey wants to go to. Gotcha. All three Set. wide receivers are going to go Set. vertical, 20. go deep, going for it all. Set. Here it is. 20. If Chicago holds, they're still alive. McGuffey passes. Oh, they're still alive. A huge road victory for the enforcers as Jamie Baisley intercepts Court that's classic linebacker play. Drop oh, back deep in your zone out. coverage and look jump for the football. I'm sure you get him. Um, Five lead changes tonight in the Meadowlands. The end result is that the enforcers are still breathing in the east. They beat Orlando next week. They're in the playoffs. Hell yeah. <laughs> Jamie Bailey, so many big plays in this game, but none bigger than this pick. Court McGuffey going for it all, but basically dropping back in coverage like you mentioned, Jesse. <laughs> Coach, first off, has it? Good job. First off, has your health. <laughs> oh man, we make it interesting. Wow, what a great interception down there, Rusty. Congratulations. That's a lot. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, what can you say? It was just a terrific, terrific ball game played by both sides. Two great teams fighting for their their chance. And your playoff life is still alive. We're, we're fighting hard. We'll be there. Ron Meyer sounds like Steven Tyler at the end of an Aerosmith national tour. <laughs> Birmingham leads Orlando by a point in the fourth. Oh, my, is it getting good. Ah! Chicago is still alive for a playoff spot. A huge come from behind victory here on the road. For Jesse Ventura, Mike Adamley, Fred Rogue, and Chris Raggy, this is Matt Vasquez, and stay with us on NBC. A big night of sports tomorrow, Saturday night, live coming up later tonight. We'll see you next week. This is the XFL!